our Mothering Sunday service is offered across our benefice. Wherever and whenever you are watching, you're very welcome as we join with Jesus, God and everyone else tuning in today. If you are missing your mum, or this is a particularly difficult time for you, for whatever reason, you are not alone. God understands and wants to help you find peace and healing. Our theme is what makes a good mother. We will find out more from the Bible, plus a dramatised reading and God created mothers, and an interview with a young mum. Hopefully there's something here for everyone. You can follow along and join in the bolded words by printing off the service booklet. Find it on our virtual vicar website. You will also find a downloadable thank you card to colour in and a craft activity, recipe for my mum. Give it a go. Let's start our service. We gather as a family, young and old together. We're privileged to come to God, our Heavenly Father, to be sheltered as newborn chicks are sheltered under the wings of their mother hen. We come to worship, to hear God's word, to pray, to listen, and to be filled with the abundance of God's love. For parents and the love which brought us to birth, we give you our thanks and praise. For mothers who have loved and looked after us, we give you our thanks and praise. For fathers who have loved and supported us, we give you our thanks and praise. For brothers and sisters with whom we have shared our homes, we give you our thanks and praise. For children entrusted to our care as parents, we give you our thanks and praise. Hope you will enjoy singing along to our first hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, or just listen if you prefer.
So we come to our prayers of penitence as we say sorry to God. Heavenly Father, parent of us all, we know we don't always treat each other as you want us to. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. There are times when we insist on getting our own way despite what others feel. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. Sometimes we increase the tension when we ought to seek peace or say things which hurt one another. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. God has loved us, sending his son Jesus to show us the true meaning of forgiveness. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. Jesus says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So we bring all that we are to Jesus, all our sins and our failure to love. Thank you that you died for us, so that we might be forgiven and start a new life in the power of your Holy Spirit. At this stage in our prayers, you might like to trace the shape of a cross with the index finger of one hand on the palm of the other. Father, we do this as a reminder that it is through the cross that our sins are forgiven. Amen. And now our Bible reading comes from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, and is read for us by Neve. During this time, a man from the tribe of Levi married a woman of his own tribe, and she bore him a son. When she saw what a fine baby he was, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of the reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in, in it and then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the river. The baby's sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. The king's daughter came down to the river to bathe while her servants walked along the bank. Suddenly, she noticed the basket in the tall grass and sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked her, shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? Please do, she answered. So the girl went and brought the baby's own mother. The princess told the woman, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So she took the baby and nursed him. Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I pulled him out of the water, and so I named him Moses. We're going to find out a bit more about what makes a good mother in our dramatised reading, and God created mothers. And God created mothers. When God was creating mothers, he was deep into his sixth day of overtime. An angel appeared and said, You are doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. God answered, Look at the requirements on this order and you'll understand why. She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have over a hundred movable parts, each one irreplaceable run on black coffee and leftovers, have a kiss that can cure anything, from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair, and have six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head. Have six pairs of hands? That's not possible for even you, my lord. It's not the hands that are causing me the problem. It's the having three pairs of eyes mother's supposed to have. Are the three pairs of eyes supposed to be on the stand? Asked the angel. The Lord nodded gravely. 
one pair of eyes that sees through closed doors when she asks, What are you kids doing in there? Even though she already knows. Another pair in the back of her head to see what uh, she's not supposed to see, but what she has to know about. And of course, the ones here in the front that can look at a child when he does something really silly and reflects, I understand and I love you, even though she doesn't utter a word. Lord, said the angel gently, get some rest tomorrow and try again. I can't. I am so close to creating something so similar to myself. Already, I have one who heals herself when she is sick, can feed a family of six on 300 grams of mince, and get a nine-year-old boy to stay under the shower for an incredible two minutes. The angel circled the model of the mother very slowly and sighed. It's much too soft, my lord. Soft, yes, but tough too, said the lord excitedly. You can't imagine what a mother can do, or endure. Can it think? asked the angel. Not only think, said the creator, it can also reason and compromise. As the angel took a closer look, the mother ran her fingers across the cheek. There's a leak, she said suddenly. I told you that you were trying to put too much into this model. You can't ignore the stress factor. The Lord moved in for a closer look at the drop of moisture, where it glistened and sparkled in the light. It's not a leak. It's a tear. The angel looked puzzled. A tear? What's that for? It's for joy, sadness, disappointment, compassion, pain, loneliness and pride. You are a genius, said the angel rapturously. The Lord looked sombre and said, I didn't put it there. We flit across now to our outdoor reporter, Reverend David Payne in Flitton, who is finding out what it is like to be a new mum in lockdown. Hello, we're here on location in Flitton and this is Alex and Darcy. Uh, Alex, how old is Darcy? Um, she's three months old now. Alex, you're an experienced mum, Darcy's not your first. But how was having a, a child in, in lockdown this time? Was that a different experience for you as a mum? Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously it was different in the hospital because my partner wasn't allowed in with me um, after she was born so and neither were her siblings so they weren't able to meet her for a few days which was a bit tricky um but yeah i think over the last few months there's been pros and cons weirdly um the pros being that my partner's at home with me all the time so he's had built an amazing bond with her he's not had to go to work every day so he's been with her every day which has been really lovely and her siblings but it it's difficult with not socialising with other babies, not being able to go out and meet other people. Um, yeah, sometimes you feel like you're going a bit stir crazy in the house when you're going with a baby. Sometimes um, yeah. it can be a bit, yeah. you can be a bit tough. Yeah. What are the sorts of gifts and qualities that you think a mum needs that make a good mum? <clears throat> I asked my children this, but I was a bit scared about the answer. <laughs> um, my daughter, weirdly, I thought she was going to say all sorts of things about people that buy her toys or <laughs> something like that yeah. but she didn't she just said oh um someone that loves me and someone that feeds me and i thought that was quite basic but actually mm. completely correct mm. um and my eldest children i think even though they're teenagers they know i'm always there for them like i'll pick them up in the middle of the pie or well you know you just drop everything i think it's a it's it doesn't matter about your circumstances in life. Being a good mum is putting your children first for me. Above all else, and, and like a, a selflessness that their needs are greater than your own. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest 
thing a mother can give their children and it doesn't matter if you haven't got physical things to give them but no. love is enough and, and is that a natural thing where do you learn do you learn it from other mums that you watch and observe or? i think a lot of it's natural i wouldn't say i was the most natural born mother i'm not the most maternal person but if some re I'm, you know but with my own children it's just overwhelming you know it's yeah. just one of those things you you don't you never think it's gonna happen and then you see this beautiful little person with like everything is now changed in my life like my life mm. has a new meaning mm. um and it's all about making these little people happy and keeping them safe yeah. And are there times when you think, oh, this whole mum business is just really tough and I'm, I'm not sure I'm equal to it? And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, um, I think we all make mistakes as well. We have to forgive ourselves for those. But, um, yeah, the arguments you have with the kids, the arguments they have with each other, yeah. um, the mistakes of the amount of times I've forgotten to give them something they need for school. Or they've turned up for fancy dress on the wrong day. I did that once. <laughs> And, you know, you just, I'm absolutely mortified into the flight, but they've forgiven me and they look back on it and laugh now. Mm -hmm. and we all do. I think you have to have a bit of a sense of humour about the mistakes you make as you go along. But and you can move on from that yeah, and, and cope with those feelings. Yeah, I think, especially with the arguments and stuff with, with the children, it's, it's just natural to have differences of opinion. And um, especially when we're in the house all the time at the moment, like being cooped up together all the time, even tempers can flare. But at the same time, it's over and done with really quickly. We all love each other. Yeah. Five seconds later, it's forgotten. Yeah. And we've moved on. Good. So. Good. Um, and we are looking forward so much to the great day when Darcy <laughs> will be christened in the church down the road. Yeah. Um, Part of that service is about as, as, as coming to it and, and thinking about our hopes and dreams for our children. What are your hopes and dreams for this lovely little bundle called Darcy? Um, well, I, you have so much, don't you? You just want them to have everything you didn't have and do everything you didn't do. And But more than anything, I just want them to be happy and loved and have a fantastic life. And that's, that's literally it. I'm just so, it's whatever you do. I just wanted to be a kind person that's loved and has love in their life, and that's it, really. Well, hang on to those hopes. <laughs> it's, um, they're great, and I think by by all I can see, you're doing a fantastic job as Darcy's mum. Oh, thank you. Thank you for for talking to us today. No problem. So this is David and Alex reporting on location for mothering <laughs> Sandy from Flitton. A good few years ago, one of my sons bought this mug for his mum. It reads, The Loveliest Mum. So I took him quietly aside and I pointed out to him that whilst Joe was undoubtedly the best mum he would ever have, any claims beyond that were wildly speculative and couldn't be proved in the least. Hard words to hear when you're six, I guess, but sometimes these things need to be said. Yes, of course it's not true. He was seven. This week as I spoke with Alex and as I watched the drama that you've just seen, for which I presume Simon grew his beard specially, I was reminded that motherhood doesn't always come easy. And there may be people watching this for whom Mothering Sunday brings to mind strained relationships or grief and loss of one kind or another. For others, it may be a day to recognise or to celebrate amazing aspects of motherly love that warm your heart or move you to buy inspirational mugs. The story of Moses might be said to belong to both these strands. His mother is forced to give him up in a desperate attempt to save his life, leaving him in a basket on the banks of the River Nile. And then Moses goes on to receive the kind of love that we would describe as motherly from some very unexpected sources indeed. From Pharaoh's daughter, from his own sister, from the royal court, as well as from his own natural mother. You've probably heard the African proverb that it takes a whole village to raise a child. And motherly love is perhaps more than something defined by a role or a relationship. Our capacity to love 
and to the love to the best of our ability comes when we truly reflect the fact that we are made in God's image and when we're attuned to let God's love flow through us. And sometimes that love, as countless images in the Bible tell us, is shown in motherly love at its best and loveliest. Time for our second hymn now, Lord Jesus Christ. use the symbolism of lighting a candle in offering our prayers. Today we'll be lighting candles as we reflect on a range of responses to Mothering Sunday in our prayers. As we light this first candle, we pause to remember with gratitude those who have truly mothered us throughout our lives and those that we remember whose love lives on in us. As we light the second candle, we give thanks for the gift of mothering and the call to nurture that lies within us all. We pray for the grace to let its flame burn bright for others. As we light our third candle, We pray for all those whom we are called to mother, for the courage to love deeply, to let go freely, and to mirror the love of God. As 
we light our fourth candle. We remember the times when our hearts have been closed to love and the need for love of those in our care. And we seek the tender healing of God. And on this Mothering Sunday, we bring our prayers for others in our homes, our communities, and in the wider world, as we join in the prayer that Christ shared with his friends and followers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We join together in saying the final prayer. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Very much hope you've enjoyed our Mothering Sunday service today, and huge thanks to everybody who's taken part in it. Don't forget that on our website you'll be able to download a copy of the thank you card and also the recipe for a good mum, which we hope that you'll enjoy filling in. Next Sunday we will once again be offering a recorded service, and as we make our way then through Holy Week and towards Easter itself, we will be offering a combination of recorded services, outdoor worship, and then services back in our churches. Do please follow the news of those services as we make them known. But now, God of all, you long to parent us and assure us of our place in your family. Send us from here filled with the abundance of your love, in the name and power of Jesus Christ, your Son, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be yours and remain yours this Mothering Sunday and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
be still.